Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday devotional for Sunday, August 22nd, 2021. Our silent meditation this morning comes from Aidan Wilson, who says, Worshippers never leave church. We carry our sanctuary with us wherever we go. Excuse me, Aidan Wilson Tozer said that. For announcements this morning, um, well, I'm glad to be back. We had some nice time away, but certainly missed everyone. And well, I got a few notes that you you missed us as well. So good to know. But I'm I know that the churches were in good hands while we were away with Reverend Doctor Marisa Laviola and Reverend Nora Faust giving the message for the last two Sundays. But as I say, I'm glad to be back. Other announcements? Um, let's see. Well, we have a confirmation planning meeting next Sunday, the 29th, 1 p.m. This is for both churches, uh, for 7th and 8th graders and their parents, and this will be held over at St. Paul's, 1 p.m. on the 29th. Today, during the service, we have a special blessing of the backpacks. So if you're watching from afar and you have young people, take a moment, gather their backpacks, and bring them to the screen when it's time for that. And also later this afternoon, the 22nd, 5 p.m., if you're in the area, over at St. Peter's UCC Church, that's just below the crossroads, we'll be having a hymn sing at 5 p.m., where we get to call out and sing our favorite hymns, followed by homemade ice cream and other goodies. So that's at 5 p.m. today at St. Peter's. If you're around and can join us, that would be wonderful. The more voices, the better. Let's continue now with our service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Our profession of faith for this morning comes from the Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 19 and 21. Let's say together, I believe that Christ ascended into heaven to manifest himself there as head of his church, through whom the Father governs all things. I believe that the Son of God, out of the whole human race, from the beginning of the world to its end, gathers, defends, and preserves for himself by his spirit and word in the unity of the true faith, a church chosen to everlasting life. And I believe that I am and forever shall remain a living member of it. What wonderful promise is there. We come to our call to worship. Welcome to this holy space where God's Spirit dwells among us. We come longing to feel the presence of God. Open your hearts, for this is a place of prayer and healing. This is a place of joy and faith. This is the place for you. Thanks be to God. Holy One, you have called us to this place, a place where we find your Spirit, we have gathered here to pray and to be forgiven, to love and be loved, and to hear the word boldly proclaimed as we apply it to our lives. Open our hearts to the mystery of your word. Remind us that your word is proclaimed in the life of Jesus the Christ. Help us believe in you and in your love for us. In the holy name of Christ we pray. Amen. In the Old Testament, King Solomon dedicated the awesome temple in Jerusalem, calling it, a, calling it a place of the presence of God. In the New Testament, the disciples recognized that the presence of God could best be found in Jesus. To whom do we turn when we need God's presence, God's guidance? God's comfort. Let's join in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, we often forget that you dwell in our hearts. 
we fail to notice that your Holy Spirit is present in our lives at all times. In our forgetfulness, we stumble and fall and turn away from you. We believe in worldly goods instead of your truth. Remind us again that you are spirit and life. You are all we need. Help us turn toward your love, your healing, and your truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's take a few moments for silent reflection and confession. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Now, friends, the psalm writer declares, No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, receive God's forgiveness and dwell in God's love and grace. Thanks be to God and Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We come to our children's time, which today is also our blessing of the backpacks. I know that two of these school districts in our area start school tomorrow, the 23rd, and a third starts a week from now. And there may even be some, who knows where you are, that are already in session. But this is a good time at the start of the school year to commend our young people to God's care and guidance. And so let's join together. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to begin this new school year as we begin each day, by acknowledging your presence among us with your blessing and guidance. Watch over our students, the owners of these backpacks, as they take the next steps in their education. Loving Savior, you call each of these young people your friend. Help them to follow your guidance, both throughout the school year and each day of life, by grace through faith in you. Their backpacks will be filled with books, but fill their lives to overflowing with your countless daily blessings. When they feel overcome by the stress and anxiety and their spirits seem low, we pray that these students find comfort in your word and knowledge of your constant presence. When they encounter sadness or grief, whether at school or at home, we pray that these students will know that you provide the spirit of comfort to all who are hurt or mourning. When they are faced with temptation to stray from your righteous path, remind them that you offer love and forgiveness for those who call upon your name. Keep their hearts and minds pure and their lives a reflection of your love for them. Bless them, we pray, to see your face in the faces of friends, teachers, parents, and others who gather with them this year. When they encounter persecution or bullying, particularly when they are standing up for what is right and good and holy, make your presence known, we pray so that each young person here is reminded of your promise to not leave, you, leave us desolate or alone. We gather here with these young people in your name, Lord Jesus, welcoming you to the circle of love and togetherness that binds us as your friends. We pray that their faith in your saving power and promises is strengthened and that their behavior and faith shines as an example to others of what it means 
to be your beloved sons and daughters. With confident hope in God's watchful care, we ask God's blessing on these backpacks and their owners. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may all of us, young and old, be strong in faith and filled with the Spirit, that we might be a blessing to all in God's world. Almighty God, hear our prayer and accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And for our young, po- young folks who are here in church on Sunday, we'll have a small goodie bag for them, some things they can use in school, and ensure some snacks as well. Please join me now in the spirit of prayer, a prayer for all who work with our young people. And I would ask, even if you're at home, if you work with young people, please stand now to be recognized and prayed over. Holy God, at age 12, you astounded the leaders and religious scholars in the temple in Jerusalem. Grant now that same wisdom to all who work with our young people. Teachers, coaches, school staff, lunch servers, custodians, everyone who has a part in shaping our young people's lives. And then around age 30, Jesus, you began a full-time ministry of teaching and healing. So now may these people who are standing to be recognized, may they teach your ways through their work and bring healing when young people turn to them. And Jesus, within three years of that, your ministry concluded with the greatest act of love on our behalf. May these people now standing model that same sacrificial love, making our students' needs their highest priority. Amen. For all of you who work with our young people, thank you. May God bless you. We come next to the prayers of the people, so I would invite us to share a few moments in silent prayer, lifting up to God those concerns and giving thanks for joys, knowing that God hears us. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for hearing our prayers this day, both those spoken aloud and those silent. We ask that you would gather them and address them according to your wisdom, your mercy, and your timing. Amen. Now let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come next to our reading of Scripture. And our first reading this morning comes from the Old Testament, the book of 1 Kings, starting in chapter 8, verse 22. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me, 
to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven in the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today. That your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O hear in heaven your dwelling place. Heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built." This is the prayer that Solomon prayed when he dedicated the temple. We come next to a psalm, Psalm 84, that celebrates that temple. And there's a note in scripture that says, To the leader, according to the Gittith of the Korahites, a psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrows find a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise, Selah. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. A beautiful song. Then we come to what may sound like a very difficult reading in John's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning with verse 56. At least some of the people that day found it difficult. Jesus is speaking to the crowd and he says, Those who, excuse me, he's speaking in the synagogue, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending 
to where he was before. It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Here end our readings for this morning. And our message, echoing the words of Peter, is entitled, To Whom Do We Turn? So please join me for a moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. When Johnny Lee recorded Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places for the 1980 movie Urban Cowboy, he instantly became a famous singer. More significantly, he put in words the yearnings of every human heart. Just hear these words. No, I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to read it. I was looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces, searching their eyes, looking for traces of what I'm dreaming of. Now, yeah, okay, the movie is a romance story, but these song lyrics speak to something even deeper. Because ever since the Garden of Eden, we have... Every one of us spent much of our lives looking for love in all the wrong places. When we need help, when we need comfort, when we need guidance, we often turn to the wrong people or resources. For comfort? Well, many people turn to an addiction. Alcohol, food, drugs, sex, power none of which provides true comfort, and each of which ultimately leads to self-destruction. Well, what about wealth? Many people take comfort and find security in their income, or their savings, or their possessions. But all of that can change in an instant. Companies move away. A medical emergency drains the savings account. A storm or a fire takes away the house, the cars, all that. Certainly, there is no lasting comfort there. Or consider the things that people turn to for guidance. Daily horoscopes, tarot cards, psychics. Now, St. Augustine debunked horoscopes 1,700 years ago. He pointed out, should have been obvious to everyone, that twins, same birth date, same birth time, within a couple minutes, twins can have very different lives and fates. So much for horoscopes. More broadly speaking, God warns us in Scripture to avoid fortune tellers. So that means there can only be one source for any knowledge or insight that comes from things like tarot cards, or psychics. It is an evil source, bent on deluding us and drawing us further away from God. What about help? Whom do we turn to for help? Well, here at least there are some good resources, some. Trusted friends and family, doctors, ministers, wise church members, 
These are indeed people that can provide some help, but each one has its limits. Friends and family can only help so much. Doctors can't always bring lasting healing. And yes, depending on what kind of help is needed, there are government agencies that can help, but again, only so much, and only sometimes. We all know of stories where a truly needy person earned just a bit too much to qualify for an aid program because of the government's sometimes strange rules. So indeed, we often look for love and comfort and guidance and help in all the wrong places. But King Solomon had it right when he directed people to worship at the newly finished temple in Jerusalem. In his dedication prayer that we just heard, we hear him pray to God to listen especially closely when people come to the temple to pray or offer sacrifices. And then he extends this circle of prayer, asking God to also listen attentively when someone, and not just an Israelite, but anyone who prays from afar when they pray in the direction of the temple. King Solomon is confident that God will hear people's prayers so that all the people of the earth may know God's name and be in awe of God. He knows that the God of Israel, the one true God, and not any of the false idols that other nations worship, no, this God will truly listen to prayers and respond. Solomon knows who it is that people should turn to. Now, fast forward a thousand years to the time of Jesus. Solomon's temple had been destroyed and rebuilt half a millennium ago, before Jesus' day. But now, in Jesus' day, King Herod had greatly expanded and beautified the temple. In our gospel reading, Jesus is teaching in a synagogue. And now think of a synagogue as a sort of satellite worship center affiliated with the temple. But what Jesus teaches really upsets a lot of the people, including his own followers. Clearly, many people that day took his words at face value. Yeah, all that talk about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And many disciples started complaining among themselves about him and his teachings, and they actually leave him. Jesus then turns to his core followers, the twelve apostles, and he asks, do they also want to leave him? Are his teachings too hard for them? Then speaking for the group, Peter does three things. First, he shows that they know that eating and drinking, that's only symbolic language. Then he declares their faith in him. And then he testifies to who Jesus really is. Listen again, all three things he does in this line. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. A thousand years before, King Solomon had taught the people to come to, or at least turn toward, the temple in Jerusalem. A reminder of who their true source of comfort, guidance, and help was, God Almighty. But now, Jesus takes that faithful devotion and directs it not toward a building or an invisible God, but on himself as the very presence of that God living in the midst of the people. And a lot of his followers, well, they don't get it. They can't get past the literal meaning of his words about eating flesh and drinking blood. And so they leave. But Peter and the other apostles, and no doubt other close followers, they do get it. 
In fact, I think Jesus could have told them that day that he was the unicorn king of purple Slobovia, and his closest disciples would still have stayed with him. I'm joking, but I say this for two reasons. First, let's be honest. The Gospels make it clear that there were times that even the apostles, his closest followers, they didn't understand what he was talking about. They only figured it out later. But secondly, and more importantly, the very presence of Jesus, even more than his teachings, his presence emanated a holiness that his disciples could sense. And that's why they wanted to be near him always. And okay, for the record, Jesus is not the unicorn king of purple Slobovia. Hear those words again. Lord, to whom can we go? Peter and the other apostles knew a good thing when they had it. And they were not about to abandon Jesus, whether they understood a particular teaching or not. Now, of course, their faith would be tested far more in the time to come. When they saw their Lord, the one that they had proclaimed, the Holy One of God, when they saw him taken away, when they saw him executed, then their faith would face its greatest challenge. But they held on, kind of, and three days later, it would all start to make sense. So folks, what about us? To whom do we turn for comfort, for guidance, for help? Now, some of us find it right here. And by the way, um, I'm recording today in Salem United Church of Christ, Elizabethville's sanctuary. So you get to see a little bit about what it looks like back there. It's a gorgeous sanctuary. I thought I might do that a little bit more in the churches. Well, some of us find our answers right here. We sense that there's something special about simply being here in church. And that's good, of course. Now, it's not the building, but it's the symbols that point us to God. The memories of songs and prayers and holidays, all of which, again, point us to God. And that's good. Now, for some, I know it's the people that make the difference. Being with brothers and sisters in Christ, whom we can turn to, lean on, even cry on. It's the mutual support we find in the body of Christ that some of us yearn for and find here. Now for some, as nice as the building and the people here are, it's nature that we turn to. We find God in the beauty of the woods and mountains, the gentle flowing of the river, the peace and power of the ocean. In nature, we sense the God who created it all, and we are in awe. All of these are good. In good times, it is good to give thanks to God in church, with the people, out in nature. And yes, in bad times, it is still good to turn to God wherever we find God. As Peter said so long ago, to whom else can we go? In the midst of a terrible loss, a friend recently mustered the faith to quote Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, assuring themselves and assuring us that despite how things seem sometimes, God is still good and God has good plans for us. Quoting Jeremiah, this person shared with the group, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Friends, always remember to turn to Jesus in both good times and bad, for we are promised a future with hope. Amen.
We come now to the blessing of the offering. And always I want to acknowledge with gratitude the gifts that continue to support our ministries in both churches. As we prepare to dedicate them, let's join in our offertory response. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And join me in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for these gifts. We offer them to you, seeking your blessing, that they might be used to welcome all, and that many will be drawn to the presence of God in this place and every sanctuary. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, truly God is everywhere, here in church, out in nature, and in the midst of our families and in our community. Let's not miss any opportunity to be in God's presence. And now as you go from this place, may you sense the presence of God. May you seek Jesus continually. And may the Holy Spirit assist you in all you do. Amen.